Fowler, CEO of Capstone Information Technologies. I'm here with Suzanne Ward, Executive Director of the Rochester City Ballet. Now I want to clarify something. You know, when I interview, when we select who are the right candidates to interview for Rochester Rockstars, we're not necessarily looking for leaders that, you know, whose companies are, you know, going gangbusters. It's what we're more interested in the leader's mindset on how they think. What is their success mindset, like I like to think of it? Because all businesses go through peaks and valleys, and, and what you do when you're in each of those situations is, I think, what makes a company stand apart. So when we decided to interview Suzanne, it was it was a necessarily, a, when there's certain leaders that are basically come into a situation where things are less than ideal, how do you make things happen? How do you turn things around? And that's what we wanted to learn from Suzanne. So many of you who are out there struggling today on how to get your business going in this tough economy, you want to pay special, um, you'll be really interested in this interview. So with that, welcome Suzanne and thank you for your time today. Thank you for, um, for interviewing me today. Yeah, I really appreciate it. So one of the things I read about you is that you've been in the banking industry pretty much your entire career. Right. So mm -hmm. tell us about this change and how coming from the banking industry to a nonprofit organization like the Rochester City Ballet, how are you leveraging that and what is your game plan? Well, um, the reason I changed actually is I just feel compelled to, to give back and to help where I can really truly make a difference in an organization. I had a wonderful career in banking but I just felt, feel like my path has changed a lot and, and going towards um, the nonprofit just makes me feel like I really can get up every day and, and, and do something um, different. And with that, you know, I have a lot of, through, I'm very fortunate through my um, experience in banking that I have a lot of commercial small business customers and large customers as well, and, and, and have very strong relationships with them and ties. And I feel like, um, you know, when we're in, in the ballet and for folks that really don't know the ballet and they don't have an emotional tie, um, it's really then my job to help build that and introduce them um, to this beauty and passion that's here. Um, and uh, the way I'm doing that is calling on customers um, and they're not going to make decisions overnight. You know, I realize that. And, um, but I listen to what they have to say. And what they're really saying is um, it's about um, they want to give, but they can't give at a high level as a large corporate customer would do. So what could I do for them? And so we came back um, and put together um, a, a small business sponsorship program that will allow them to be able to write a small check, but I want to make sure that I give back to them. So it's a win-win for both. Um, and, 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 and the way I'm going to do that is to make sure that like, if they, um, if, if they prefer a season sponsorship, then they, we can put their um, logo on our website. We'll have a hyperlink to theirs. If there's any event going on in that particular organization, we'll, we'll um, put it through our social media lines. Um, we'll do e-blasts. We'll send it out to our, our patrons and just really encourage them to participate. The other way um, that we could do this is um, we do a lot of uh, community outreach ourselves with our charities. Um, and if we're over, for instance, at Hillside and the dancers are with the children there, um, we can invite our, our um, sponsorship, sponsors to come on over and be part of that so that their clients can see that they really are involved in community mm -hmm. outreach as well. I, I think that's really interesting. So I never thought about it this way. So when I, when I was thinking, okay, coming from the banking industry, it's like almost you're starting over, but you're really not. You're leveraging the contacts Right. And, and then the clients you had when you were working with the bank because you had small mm -hmm. business clients. Mm -hmm. And then you're basically using those same contacts and networks to call on now that you're at the Rochester City Ballet. Right. And the other thing that I heard you say is what, it, you know, it's always important. You're out there trying to get donors and sponsors for you, mm -hmm. but then you're thinking, and what's in it for them? Right. And, and you're coming up with the small business, and, and by being a sponsor of Rochester City Ballet, what are they going to get in return? They're going to get more exposure. You're going to like all the yes. client base that you have, um, and then you're going to have all these marketing e-blasts and things like that to help promote their business. Right. So I truly believe it's all the relationship orientation. You know, it's really key to help each other. It's a small town here in Rochester, but there's so many wonderful people. And if we could all just really enhance our partnerships and our relationships, it's going to be win-win for everyone. 
and I feel um, like very strongly that um, I want to continue to do that and as we grow this is a year of transition for us but as we continue to grow our outreach will really expand as well and then um, that will help generate the revenue for the ballet which is the bottom line right, right. which is what wakes me up in the middle of the night um, but I just feel like it's there it's there it's doable we have a wonderful wonderful staff and an amazing product if you will you know to see and and when I um, start thinking like how am I going to do this I'll come back and I'll watch them and it's just amazing to see them come together and um, and really push the edge push the envelope you know in terms of their skill and and um, and their dance and you know it's interesting you say that because um, often if this happened to us and then I mentor other businesses I tell them too that if ever you're feeling kind of self-doubt or things are like yeah. not going right the best thing you can do is go to lunch with one of your, you know, raving fan clients and get them to tell you how you're benefiting them. And right. that energizes me all the time. Exactly. Like just hearing them say, Satima, the only reason my business is thriving today is because of the support you guys give us. I mean, right. that that's, makes it all worthwhile and right. ready to go again, right? And you're so grateful. I mean, even for a $5 contribution, you know, we're so grateful for that. And um, it's like Mondays. We all we don't like Mondays. You know, it's just our nature. But if you dress up and you look great on Monday, you feel better about yourself, and you're you're gonna other people are gonna experience you in a better way on a Monday. I mean, that's just something I've always done. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind of silly, but exactly. it works. Um, Any other tips you have on when and you know when days when like I don't know. Your employees are kind of grouchy, and, and <laughs> your donors are not you know calling you back or like. When things look really tough, do you have your certain ritual on how to get yourself back up? I do, I do. I um, it's it's spiritually for me, very spiritually, um, and that helps me and it keeps me, it sustains me and and keeps me going in the right direction. Oh, yeah, that's it's great. very 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 big part of my life. So um, so I'm able to do that, you know. And then the other thing is stepping back and realizing that you know it's all a strategic planning process. And I'm a structured person, so I have to have things laid out accordingly so that I can, you know, give myself goals. Like over the next six months, I've given myself a very hefty goal that I really need to achieve in terms of dollars coming in. Um, and in doing so, then I know every single day what I need to accomplish. And so I'll back into that number and get there. Um, it might be a little difficult, but you know, it's it's going to work. I think I really I think feel comfortable. Goal setting is, is yeah, key. I think it's. You uh, have to know where you're going. I right? have to, and I have to put the tactical steps in place to ensure that I get there, and that's what I drive with my team, and that's what you know we're we're really all about now. So that's the new business model, if you will. Okay. And one of the reasons, uh, one of the things that I wanted to do here, um, the board had started a beautiful strategic plan last year, um, and now we're actually putting that into place. Um, and adding, you know, looking at that, um, Jamie Leverett, who's artistic director, looking at her artistic vision over the next three to five years, making sure that's part of it. And then um, my job on the operations side is to allow her to, be, we have enough funding, so we're allowing her that freedom to be so creative because she does it so beautifully that um, she can just go and then she can get, you know, take the dancers where she wants to, to be. And then ultimately, you know, um, you know, put them on a tour and just go wherever they really can go that will, will make them stronger as individuals and a stronger organization. Okay, you wonderful, know? wonderful. Now, do you have a mentor uh, or, or a group of mentors in Rochester? Um, I really don't, per se, but um, I, would, I would probably say my mom. My mom was the uh, Supreme Court clerk in Canandaigua until I think oh, she was wow. like 75. Um, she just had such a wonderful work ethic that she taught all of us that and there was five of us and we're we're all you know pretty strong professionals and um, and my kids you know my children are doing that as well um, and I think that it comes from her but I've had the privilege of having so many um, um, wonderful experiences in my career with all different kinds of people people that I reported to in New York through Chase or the people at HSBC um, and First Niagara, it just, I just had a really wonderful um, opportunity to learn. You know, you can take what other people um, 
can, you know, can sort of teach you, and you put that into your own style, and then you can make a difference. So you have to be open and perceptive yes. to that, because you never know when that golden yes. nugget is going to come exactly. through. Exactly. I mean, it could be somebody you're talking to at a Wegmans, you know, right. line, you know, while you're it, waiting at a checkout line. Without hesitation. Yeah. I mean, and that's how I actually um, came here, is that um, Lauren Dixon is a friend of mine from Dixon Swabble, and I've done a lot of um, work at St. Louis Church in, in Pittsburgh, which is a real love of mine. And I was mentioning to her one day, you know, how much I love that kind of work. And if she, you know, knew of any organization really that might be in need of somebody with my background. And uh, a couple of days later, she called me and asked me to call the chair wow. here, um, Catherine. And it was just wonderful. So it just started from there. So I'm, in, you know, indebted to her dearly. Yeah, she, it's yeah. like a law of attraction. If there's something you want, you think yeah. about it and you tell people around it. It happens. Yeah. It's like magic. And you don't know what's going, you know, how your path is going to change. You just have to pay attention to it. Yeah. And I was having that experience and that drive was coming out of me, you know? Yeah. And um, that was, it was really kind of interesting when I stopped, stepped back and write, think about it, you know? And I, I always like to see where, what, what it's going to look like a year from now. Yeah. After all we put into play, what's that going to look like in, you well, know, I a think year. everything you're say, visualizing a year from now is going to happen because I you're, hope so. You're, I think you're that kind of person. <laughs> so I think we're so lucky to have talked to you. Um, do you have any last words of advice for other entrepreneurs out there? Um, I would just say persevere, but have your structure in place. Know what you want to accomplish and give yourself those goals and then make sure you've got realistic steps in place to ensure you meet them. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not coming in and just selling overnight and having that customer buy it. It takes, it takes um, the passion so that they can see that in you, that you truly believe in, in what you're selling or what you're trying to accomplish. And that, that does make a difference. And then they start to want to you know, be part of that. So yeah, I yeah. think it's to, if you don't do it, if you don't believe in it, but if you truly believe in it, then take it, to, um, take it the path it needs to go. Awesome. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you thank for your you. time. Thank you. You're welcome. Success. And You're welcome. Thank you for watching. And if you want to be considered for a Rochester Rockstar interview, go to www.rochesterrockstars.com. And I look forward to perhaps meeting you.